Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we had a question. We showed you how to customize password protected pages with Divi's theme builder. Really easy to do. We had a question. Somebody was asking how you actually customize the input field itself. Now this involves a bit of CSS coding. So that's what we're going to do today. But don't let that put you off. Any CSS code I write, I'll put down below and you're welcome to use it. So we're going to turn this, which is the generic sort of password protected page into this, which is a little more easy on the eyes and you can style it to look more like the rest of your site if you need to. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is go into my theme customizer for anybody who doesn't know how to get to the customizer, go down to dashboard appearance and then customize and it'll take you right here. At the bottom, you can see home page settings and temporarily, once you've got your password protected page set up, temporarily make it your home page in the home page settings. You can change it back afterwards just so we can work with it in the theme customizer here. Then when you've done that, go down to additional CSS and this is where we're going to write our CSS for this today. So what I'm going to do is delete all the CSS that I've got here and it should revert back to the original. There we go. OK. So I've given it a little title up here. It's always a good idea, especially if you write a lot of code like I do, to give things titles. It makes it easier to find for yourself. And it's also a courtesy if anybody comes in behind you to edit the site. They, they can, instead of having to sift through and read every class and ID, they can see it straight away. All right. So if I right click and inspect this today, I'm using Google Chrome. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Google Chrome is a free download. And we've got to be careful not to change any other forms that we're going on that we've got going on our site. So we want to be specific about our code here today. So let's go. I select the page here. We want this class here, post password required. So it's only going to affect post passwords. In other words, locked pages, password protected pages. Let's double click on that. Double left clicked. And I'm going to select the actual class I want. Anytime there's a gap, that's a separate class there. Style publish, separate class, type page, separate class. And you can be more specific if you want to. You can put the actual post in if you just want to do one, one particular one. But this will do, so all my protected posts will be affected by this. So I'm going to copy this. Let's go down where my title was. OK, so it's a class. All classes have to have a dot or a period in front of them. So I'm going to put a period and then the actual name itself. Now, what do we actually want to target? We want to target the password protected form, which is down here. Here we are, password protected form. So I want to add that class to it. Again, double click on it. It'll get you the little class there highlighted. Space. And again, it's a class. So we need to put a period or dot in front of it. And what do we actually want to target? We want to target the actual input. So it's under P and then input. So we're going to write P and then input. There we go. And now we can start writing some code. So let's open and close our little brackets here and decide what we actually want to do with it. Well, first thing, let's give it a little border. And let's make it two picks. We'll make it solid. And let's perhaps use the blue of the logo up there. I've got a free little chrome color picker up here. I'll just grab that hex code right there. Copy that. Close it down. All hex codes need to have a hashtag in front of them and then the hex code. And as you can see, or as you can't see, it's not added a border. So what we've got to do is force it. And I don't like to do this, but sometimes you just have to. And to do that, Going to give it a space exclamation mark important there we go and our borders actually shown up there fantastic 
So let's put a semicolon. Always put a semicolon after your line of code. If you fail to do that and write another line of code, it won't read it. So we'll go on down and now let's give it some round corners. So let's say border radius, border dash radius. And let's give it 50 pixels, colon. 50 pixels should make it nice and round. And again, that's not done anything. So again, I'm just going to copy that and the colon as well, semicolon at the end there. Pop it in there. There we go. We've got our rounded corners there. Fantastic. Now you can keep styling however you want. I'll do a few things. If you don't want rounded corners, just delete this line. If you don't want a border, just delete this line. Change the thickness of it with the pixel value. Change the color with a hex code. So let's give it a bit of box shadow. If you don't want it, you know what to do. And I don't want it too much left and right. So I'm going to make it one pix left and right. Five picks up and down. And ten picks spread. There we go, that's fine. And I'm reasonably happy with that colour. If you wanted to put your own colour in, just put a hashtag and whatever colour you want in there. Great. Next thing I want to do is perhaps drop it down a little bit. It's too tight up to that little text on the top. So to do that, I'm going to put a semicolon first. I'm going to put a bit of margin on the top. Say margin dash top. Say 30 pixels or something like that. Obviously, you do what works for you. Great. OK. And I thought it would be a nice idea. I mean, this is fine like this with a little button down there. I just thought it would be a nice idea to shrink this down a little bit and have the, the little button in line with it. So let's do that. Again, I'm going to add my semicolon for another line of code. So I'm going to give it a width of, say, let's say 60%. Obviously, you change this to whatever you want or what works for you. And again, we're going to have to force it. So let's paste my little important in there. There we go. As you can see, that shrunk up. Now, if I float this over to the left, it should bring our button over to it. So let's do that. Let's go down and say float colon left semicolon and as you can see our buttons now up on the same line as we've got here and we'll style that in a minute and bring it over closer to our input field okay so I'm pretty happy with that input field now so let's start working on the button itself so I'm going to right click on the button hit inspect and we're down here and there's the class we want ET submit button and again we want to be specific about this and just target it with our password protected pages so let's copy the class name from over here and we'll pop down I'll pop it in below and now we can target our ET submit button again double left click just want one of them and it's the class name again so it needs a period or a dot in front of it in the class name open and close some brackets and we can write our code in between there okay first thing I want to do is let's give it some rounded corners just like we had on our input field so in fact I can steal a bit of code let's just steal this bit of border radius code up here there we go I'm going to take that important away just to see if it works without it. Like I said, I don't like to use that unless I have to. That's OK. Great. I want to float it left so it's closer to that input field. There we go. A little bit too close, but that's all right. OK, well, let's line it up a little bit. So I'll give it a bit of margin on the top. Can't use padding with the button. If I use padding, it'll make the button fatter or wider. But we will use padding in a minute to make it a little bit bigger. OK, margin top. Let's try 20 pixels. A little bit too far. Let's drop that to about 18. There we go. That's pretty much in the middle right there. Now let's make it similar size to our input field here with padding. So we'll say padding colon 
and I'm going to put two values in. That'll give its first value will be top and bottom. So let's try 10 pixels top and bottom. That's okay. And I want it to be fairly wide. So let's give it, say, 40 pixels left and right. There we go. We seem to be a little out of line. It looks like it's got a little white border on it too. So let's just take any border away. So semicolon, border, none. That's better. Okay, now I don't want it actually touching the side there. So let's give it a little margin on the left and push it as far away as we actually want it over there. We'll do the hover in a minute. As you can see, that's a weird hover effect going on there. So margin on the left to push it away from the input field. Margin left, dash left, colon, and let's perhaps give it 50 pixels. There we go. Obviously, you put in or change the value to whatever you want. Great. Well, that's kind of looking like I want it. I guess we ought to give it a box shadow, same as we did before. So again, I can just steal this one from up here. And again, if you don't want something, just delete the line that you don't want. There we go. We've got a little box shadow in there. OK, well, let's set a hover state. I'm fairly happy with that button as it is. If you wanted to change the font, just put in font family for font family or font size for font size. But I'm happy with mine, so I'm going to leave that as is. Let's do a hover state for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our class up there. Pop it in down below here. Put the ending closing bracket in there. You always got to have a closing bracket if you've got an opening bracket. Now to make this a hover ET submit button, I'm going to put a colon on the end of button, no space and no space again and the word hover. So colon after the end of button with no space and then the word hover after the colon. If you put a space in there, it won't work. All right, so what do we want to change? Well, first thing I want to do is give it a background color. So let's take the background color from perhaps this color that we've got going on here. I guess we could make the background color of this button the same as that border. So, so let's go back up and give that our own blue background. And I'll use that color again there. So let's just go down, we'll say background colon and let's steal the color from back up here and I'll take the important as well because we're going to need it to overwrite the styles on that button there it is right there that's better and for the hover state color I'm going to copy this and we'll just change out the hex code And let's use the, perhaps the lighter blue of the logo up there. Again, I'll use my little free color picker. There we go. Now that's not exactly the shape I want, but very easy fix right there. What I'm going to do is what do we actually need? Box shadows there. We just need the border radius and the padding looks like. So I'm going to steal the padding and the border radius from the top here. Only need the things that aren't working. There we go. We've got the border radius and let's grab the padding up here. There we go. That's more like it. Fantastic. Well, I'm happy with the button there. Now you may want to just change it. I know I showed you before how to customize the background if you want, but if you're in here and you're working, you just want to do it quickly with this. We can do that very easy by targeting one of the sections up here. There we go. If I hover over, if we target that whole section there. Again, we want to be specific because we don't want this to affect any other sections on our site. So I'm going to get our post password required again so it just does it for the password protected pages here 
and we'll get our section ETPB section again I only want the regular one and again it's a class so we want a dot or a period in front of it open and close our curly brackets and let's put in our background color and let's just do light blue there we go fantastic semicolon that's all I want to do to that and I think I had a little grow effect on the button when they hovered over it so let's put that in that's just the scale effect so in our hover state for our button up above here do transform colon scale open and close some rounded brackets with no gaps and in between let's just scale it by 1.1 percent I think that's what I did before if you want to do different values for top and bottom left and right put a comma in and put a second bunch of values first one will be top and bottom second will be left and right so let's try that yeah that's growing a bit great all oh, right what else do we want to do here we just want to fill out our page a bit more so I want to this password protected I want to add a bit more padding to the top so it pushes it down because I don't really want to see the footer floating in the middle of the page up there so I'll use viewable height for that VH which is the viewable height of whatever screen it's being viewed on so I'm going to inspect that one and there it is ET password protected form and once again we want to be specific with this so I'm going to get that one I know it's a class period let's get it double left click copy paste it in there there we go open and close some curly brackets now how much do I want let's try 10% so we'll say padding top colon 10 viewable height 10 VH let's push it down some great semicolon and then with our submit button I can put some on the bottom just to fill out the rest of that so let's get rid of our inspector there and see how much we have to push it down so in the regular state for the button let's just drop down one now we can't do this with padding because that will make the button fat but I can do it with margin so we'll say margin bottom let's try another 10 VH not quite enough let's take that up to maybe 15 looks about right obviously you adjust yours how you want so I'm fairly happy with that now what we need to do is publish go over to our password protected page here and refresh and there we have it that's pretty much filling out the page we've got our new password protected form going on up there we've got our animated submit button so that is how to customize your password protected input field with a bit of CSS I hope that's answered your question there and don't forget I'll put all this code down below just use it how you will just change out anything you want to change to get yours looking how you want to CSS is a wonderful thing to learn so I do encourage you to have a go at this and not just copy and paste but that's entirely up to you I know time is crazy sometimes and you just need to copy and paste stuff so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel once again this has been Jamie with system 22 and webdesign and tech tips .com. thanks for watching have a great day